in my art practice, it's kind of connected to everything else I do. You know, I didn't really make the distinction when I was a student. I kind of, uh, well, I think I started to connect the dots, like what I did on the weekend was as important as what I was doing in a studio. I think about shots in terms of composition, but probably it's more exciting when um, the medium is kind of given over to um, other terms and processes. This new exhibition, Stereo Sequences, is the first in ACME's new series of commissions, Horizons. Sean has really focused on the immersive experience of the viewer in a way that is new to his work, which I think the ACME space and the capacity for us to work with multi-screens and with new technologies has really enabled him to ramp that part of his practice up. In this case, yeah, certainly I was interested in the fact that people are looking at the work and they're in some underground space and maybe that, that really influenced the, the decision behind a lot of works. The commission was really generous in terms of the scale of the pieces. The idea of having like a lot of works in conversation together was probably um, the most exciting sort of thing uh, for me and, and also for maybe individual works to have so many different parts. The presentation appears quite simple, you know, there's very limited editing, um, very sort of fine or simple treatments to the work either sort of in camera when we're shooting and then in terms of post-production. But of course in this show you start to multiply that by the, the number of works and the, a lot of dual channel synchronised works and, and you know that starts to sort of build out into quite a complex thing. Stereo Sequences really represents the first time that he's used large-scale, immersive, architecturally designed multi-screen installations. Sean has been interested in sort of positioning the viewer in between screens for quite a while. When I think of like uh, the idea of landscape, I guess it's a loaded term, you know, and uh, uh, I am interested in, in painting terms and, and so I would have to kind of admit that I, I do think about um, a kind of tradition of Australian landscape painting. Sean has in the past worked in a variety of rural and sort of urban landscapes in Australia and overseas. He's made works in arcades in Korea, he's made works sort of famously in Broken Hill with the Mantis Maximus series which he's returned to again here in Parallel Forces. The locals call it the Outback Hollywood. You know, it's, it's been a very well represented um, chunk of uh, Outback Australia. And um, I guess I, I was interested in the fact that it has this history of representation. So uh, certainly, you know, George Miller locating Mad Max 2 there was a huge factor. But maybe the, the fact that um, all of these representations from like Razorback to you know, Wake in Fright, all of these, these films and even TVCs being based there, they kind of gave me an image bank um, of that space before I even physically visited the location. So I'm, I'm interested in this kind of comp complex kind of relationship that we have to um, space via representation. Some of these video works are perhaps even more simplified. They're quite raw in, in some sense. So it's been nice to work in in that way, which is not particularly precious, and it kind of values the experience. And I think that's the case for a lot of the work, I and mean, it values the, the performances. Over time, Sean has worked with quite a tight group of performers, but this time he expanded that group of people and went looking for other performers to try and diversify his attention to the types of sort of subcultures of movement and bodies. Uh, I knew that I was going up to Sydney and meeting up with other performers that were dancers or martial artists or something within the field of sort of street culture, urban culture. And uh, yeah, he asked us to spin. Oh, I knew sort of coming into this that it was all about um, turning and spinning. But, you know, Sean was a really open person. When I rocked up that day, he was, you know, gave me an idea of what he wanted to do. and. Basically, was, I was free to um, sort of show him what I could do. It just took a little bit of time coming, 
coming at it from her angle because I'm not like directing her performance. It was a, a new experience and I was interested in her dancing, like I was a great fan of her work. I spent a, a bit of time improvising and sort of showing him, I guess, the repertoire of steps that we have. The 80s backspin. He's got, he's got a specific taste in some of the moves that are from the 80s that we do in, in breaking. But I think he's try, he was trying to capture those moments in the dance that happen in those 10, 13 seconds and prolonging them. You can see how slow someone rotates and it, it looks impossible. Sean saw this ballet and dance as, you know, an extreme sport. You know, often it's not sort of considered that, but capturing dance in slow-mo, it gets to show people sort of that side of, of dance and how athletic it is and how extreme, you know, it can get. It's really interesting the way that Sean has played with time and movement and created in some ways an incredibly meditative space but also a terribly muscular space. There's a lot of machines, there's a lot of movement and there's a play between sort of speed and stillness which I think creates a tension which is terribly exciting for viewers in a way to find their own place in all that commotion but also a space for meditation.